At this time, it is my honor to invite to the stage Mickey Heineken and Roy Heffernan. This looks bad. It's, don't worry, it's, I use 48 font because I can't see. So it's not, a, not as bad as it looks. Thanks, Aaron. I'm really excited about being able to introduce Roy Heffernan uh, for his induction into the Hall of Fame tonight. Um, to be very honest, my, my tenure at Middlebury was blessed with uh, being able to coach an amazing group of athletes for the entire time I was here. But from my perspective, there honestly could not have been a better choice uh, for the first football player from uh, my era to be inducted into the Hall of Fame. All of us recognize Hef's outstanding uh, athletic accomplishments, but more impor importantly, we recognize his superior personal qualities that have really defined him. Very simply, Hef is special. In 1973, when I first came here, we had a slogan on the cover of our playbook that said, in pursuit of excellence. Honestly, uh, over the years, there were some guys that just couldn't grasp that. Um, but Hef internalized those words. He lived them. He took them to heart. I could not have asked for a um, person, an athlete, to be more committed than he was. The pursuit of excellence drove everything that Hef did at Middlebury as an athlete and as a student. And that same pursuit has been personified in his life since he left Middlebury, starting as a freshman football coach uh, at Middlebury, and then ending his career as a partner and chief operating optimist of a little t-shirt company some of you may have heard of called Life is Good. I have one distinct and unforgettable story that demonstrates the qualities that Mark Heff. In his senior year, the football team was undefeated and we were playing our final game uh, the season against Norwich. Like all the Norwich games in those days, which unfortunately we no longer play, but that's another story if you want me to get into that. Uh, in, in those days, it was a tremendously physical contest. Late in the second quarter, Hef came off the field limping pretty badly. At halftime, our doctor came to us and he said that Hef had sprained his knee, but he thought it was going to be all right for him to uh, continue playing in the second half. Despite the Herculean efforts of Hef and his teammates, our team went on to suffer what really was an emotionally devastating loss, and we finished the season 7-1. Needless to say, there were many lowered heads and more than a few tears being shed in the locker room. A player or coach cannot invest his heart and soul into achieving a goal and not deeply feel the pain when that goal isn't achieved. Telf Hef felt the pain like the rest of us, but then he stood up and he yelled for everybody's attention. He was the captain of the team. And as I remember, and I don't think I'm very far off on the exact quote on this, he said, hey guys, get your heads up. We did everything we could to win the game, but it just wasn't to be. I see tears in your eyes, just like mine, but be proud of the effort that we gave. I'm not crying because we lost an orange. We won't go undefeated. I'm crying because our journey together is over. I know I have gone through an experience with all of you which can never, ever be duplicated. Our time together has been magical. Almost instantaneously, the pain and the focus on the loss in the locker room 
changed to an all-encompassing feeling of togetherness. Hef understood at the old age of 22, it was just a game. Later, we learned that Hef suffered a ligament injury in the Norwich game, which required surgery. However, he sometime, somehow recovered from that with brutal out-of-season workouts. To lead the lacrosse team to its fourth consecutive ECC, ECAC championship in the spring. In many people's eyes, the unsurpassed commitment and talent that he demonstrated on the football field was equaled, if not surpassed, on the lacrosse field. When we are with Hef, we understand excellence, and we believe that life is good. It's my distinct pleasure to introduce Roy Heffernan for his induction into the Hall of Fame. Cheer, boys, cheer! Well, Mick, thanks so much. I did notice that most of the other recipients tonight needed only one sport to get inducted. <laughs> this means so much to me. I find myself a bit saddened that Duke Nelson is not personally here, as this would have been so exciting for him. I knew, I knew Duke, and he was uh, nothing but the greatest fan that Middlebury's uh, players could ever have. And while I did not know Sonny, I feel the same way for him. This means so much to me that it begs the question, why does it carry the weight that it does? Once I get beyond my own ego, which doesn't take much, since God has given each of us talents and it's our job to maximize these gifts, the answer to the question, why does it mean so much, is people. So I marvel at how lucky I am to have been surrounded by people who have cared for me as they have. Thanks for letting me share my gratitude for a few of these people. Claire is my beautiful wife of 32 years. While she was not with me during my middays, she has come to know and has at times been bewildered by my intensity for competition. However, recently Claire embraced tennis in a big way. For the first time since I have known her, she shares my intensity and really wants to win. Yes, my wife has become the John McEnroe of women's tennis on Cape Cod. If she swears at the linesman one more time, I understand she will be asked to leave the league really never thought that I would qualify as the nice one in the family. <laughs> My kids too, Luke and Jana, have become experts at managing me, and with their new spouses, Jess and VJ, are my biggest fans. Now, if there were a Hall of Fame for parents, Mike and Betty Heff would be inducted into the inaugural class. For eight straight years, they catered to our football and lacrosse teams in multiple and regular ways. In addition to road trip stays, dinners, and victory parties, Mike would be on the field grass in those days, somewhere around 7.30 in the morning of game day, carefully inspecting the field and being ready to give me any tactical advice as to which blades of grass might be avoided. <laughs> he couldn't get enough. Betty was great, too. However, I do question Betty's value uh, as she hurt our chances of winning when she regularly placed several players on the DL due to her world-class hugging. <laughs> my seven siblings are here tonight. Four of the seven are my sisters. And back in high school, Title IX was finally mandated. Although it was still in its infancy and really didn't give uh, the, the girls too much uh, increased effort right away and increased opportunity. My sisters took a back seat to my three-sport focus in high school, and I'm grateful 
to each of you for allowing me the stage. Speaking of high school, my football and lax coach, John Bambry, and wife Carol are here tonight, too. And I simply say to you, John, thanks for everything, coach. To my brothers, one Panther and two Brown University Bruins, all of whom captained their respective football, lax, or both teams in college, you continue to, be, to inspire me every day. Three of my favorite people are no longer with us. Each of these heroes of mine enabled me to fly at Middlebury. Dave Thompson was a trustee at Mid when I came here. I would not have gotten into Middlebury without him, and I never, never wanted to let him down. Erica Wanaka was Dean of Students. Uh, she helped me claw my way to my sophomore year. If a 19-year-old could appropriately, that is appropriately, be in love with a 50-something woman, I was in love with Erica. <laughs> Dick Waterman was our trainer, and Dick meant the world to me and, and to many, many, many other student athletes. Along with Sue Murphy, who's here tonight, they motivated me to come back from knee surgery. Yeah, go ahead, give Sue a nice hand. The combination of Dick and Sue motivated me to come back from knee surgery that Mick just talked about for my final season of lacrosse by toggling between encouraging me and calling me a wuss. <laughs> oh, they were tough, but I loved it. For the past few years in business, I've had an executive coach, a mid guy, in fact. The process that we followed was the defining and discovery of my best self and striving towards always being that person. When I was thinking of the gratitude that I have for my three head coaches at MID, it occurred to me that each of them showed up as their best selves for our teams every day. My freshman year lax coach, Bob Pfeiffer, with his powerful marine chiseled body, discipline, and his contagious smile, Semper Fi. Dennis Daly with his creative mind and courage to let us run and do what we do. And Mickey Heineken with his dedication to doing things right and his authentic love for each of his players. Each of these guys showed up as their very best selves every day. What a lesson to us as we make our way through our lives, and I am eternally grateful. Finally, it's a bit weird to receive an individual award stemming from two team-focused sports of football and lacrosse. It's so obvious that I would not be here without my teammates. I'm honored to share this award with the great players of the four football and four lacrosse teams that I was lucky enough to play. And a special nod to Dwayne Ford, who captained both sports with me and brought his unique and complimentary leadership style and skills. <laughs> Beyond the memories of the 70s, these true friends, my teammates, continue to demonstrate the love that we hold for each other. On my birthday in 2014, I had a heart attack my teammates flocked to my aid and played a huge role in my full recovery. Every person should be so blessed to be part of such a group. As a team, we are only as great as the sum of our hearts. Thank you, and cheer, boys, cheer.